Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. The Style panel in Anime Studio Debut gives you a wide range of options that will directly affect the objects you draw on stage. First, you can affect the fill, stroke, and width of every object you draw. To demonstrate this, I will select the object I currently have on my screen with the Select Shape tool. Now, in the Style panel, I can alter the fill color, stroke color, and line width of this oval. So if I click on the green fill color, I'm able to choose from a variety of different colors, as well as a stroke color, and I can enter in a number for the line width. Next to the width panel, you have a brush setting. So if you click that, a window will appear to give you access to a variety of different brush types. A brush is essentially what your line strokes will look like. So as you can see, none is very solid, but if we click on the next option, we have a more dirty look to it. And there's many different options to choose from. Once you find a brush you like, you can adjust some options below, such as brush jitter angle, brush spacing, and so on. You can play with those options, and once you're done, you can click OK. And you'll notice now that my oval has very dirty looking lines. It's almost as if I drew it with a piece of chalk. Next, there are the style effects. So once again, I will take my select shape tool and select the object. And just a note, you can draw new objects with your style settings in place. I'm just using the Select Shape option to speed the tutorial along. Next, let's look at the Effects panel. Here, we can apply different effects for our object. Shaded, Soft Edge, Halo, Gradient, Image Texture, and Drop Shadow. I'll demonstrate a few of these, so first let's click on Shaded. Here, we can apply a Shade effect to the object. Light Angle allows us to adjust the angle in which the shade occurs. Offset gives us a bigger shade or a smaller shade depending on the number. And Blur allows us to increase or decrease the blur effect. As you can see that really affects how it looks. And finally you can choose a shadow color. Once you're happy with your selections, click OK. And you can see now we have a shaded effect applied to this object. Gradient works by selecting two or more colors to create a gradual effect of color transition. You can choose from linear, radial, reflected, or angle. All of these will place the colors in different positions. From here, you can choose which colors you want to be applied to the gradient. And of course, you can always see a preview right here. And once you're done, you can click OK. And from there with the gradient, you can take your Select Shape tool and adjust where the gradient goes by simply moving these two red icons. Next, let's take a look at the Image Texture option. First, I will select my oval so that we have it selected, so that we can apply the effect to it. Then go back to my Effect drop-down menu and choose Image Texture. From here, you can choose an image. And choose to either tile it or don't repeat. Tile will repeat the image back and forth if the image is small enough. If it's big enough though, you may want to go with don't repeat. It just depends on the effect that you want to place in this object. So once you've done that, click OK. And now we have the texture within the oval. Next are your color swatches. If you click on the drop down menu, you can choose from all sorts of different swatches. Essentially these are built in to give you different color scheme choices if you're trying to stick to a certain style. So if we choose blue, you'll get all sorts of blue colors to choose from. Gradient will give you the gradient color scheme. 
sky will give you different colors of a sky, and so on. Finally, let's take a look at the advanced settings. Here we can do some more things like mix effects together, create round caps, and so on. First, let me select my shape again with the Select Shape tool. And from here we can do some different things. Like for instance, I can go into my Effect 1 drop-down menu and choose Soft Edge and click OK. Then for the second effect, I can choose Drop Shadow and adjust that and click OK. So now I have two effects going for this object. The Round Caps option basically creates round tips for your lines, and that's checked by default. But if you don't want that, you can deselect that. Finally, the Style panel allows you to save shapes. Now let's say you want to save this oval. You can go up to the name line and enter in a value. Now, when you look in the Shapes drop-down menu, you can access the shape. This allows you to select the shape and use it as a reference whenever you wish. And that's just a little bit about the style panel. There's many cool things you can do with it. It's a really useful feature for Anime Studio, so I definitely recommend that you play around with it and get familiar with all the settings and features. If you would like more information on Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out more of my Anime Studio 9 tutorials, and I'll see you next time.